Hi, I'm Diego Gonzalez, a PhD researcher within the TeamUp 5G project. Today, I will try to cover the basic concepts of the MAC layer and resource allocation. So, the MAC layer's main goal is to, for each user equipment or UE, assign bandwidth resources, choose the optimal modulation and coding scheme, or MCS, and handle the HIRQ retransmissions. This process is usually referred as a scheduling or resource allocation. To make these resource allocation decisions, the following information is available. Quality of service or QS data, such as minimum guaranteed bandwidth, packet loss rates, US priority, etc. Radio channel quality as measured by the US and base station, such as the signal to interference ratio or SINR. Buffer status, reported by the higher layers, indicating how much data is queued up waiting for transmissions. But what are these resources? How are they organized? These resources are divided in the frequency and time domain. In the frequency domain, the best station has a fixed bandwidth assigned for transmission and reception. This bandwidth is divided into subcarriers of fixed size. On the other hand, and to bound the resources allocation steps in time, the total scheduling time is limited and subdivided in smaller units. These time and frequency divisions build the so-called resource grid, in which the described smaller units are arbitrarily assigned by the scheduler to different UEs. These small time frequency units are the OFDM symbols. Let's first analyze the frequency bandwidth division. First, we have the frame which is the largest division unit extending along the entire bandwidth. The frame contains a set of contiguous resource blocks. Each resource block is built with 12 consecutive subcarriers in the frequency domain. These subcarriers are the smallest frequency division. Their size in frequency depends on the numerology and subcarriers spacing. Consequently, the size of the resource block also depends on the subcarrier spacing. On the time side, the frame is the largest division unit with a fixed length of 10 milliseconds. Then, the subframe is the next level of granularity with a fixed size of 1 millisecond. We then have the slot, which contains individual OFDM symbols. In LTE, the number of OFDM slots is 6 or 7. In 5G, it is increased to 12 to 14. The time length of the OFDM and consequently, the slot depends on the numerology or subcarrier spacing. We have mentioned the importance of the selected numerology for the duration of a slot and the number of resource blocks with which fit in the available bandwidth. The numerology defines the subcarrier spacing in the frequency domain, which is directly related to the duration of an OFDM symbol. As the subcarrier spacing increases, the duration of, the, of an OFDM symbol decreases, allowing to include more slots in a subframe. As we already mentioned, the resource block is composed of a slot with 7 to 14 OFDM symbols in time domain and 12 subcarriers in the frequency domain. These individual time frequency units are the resource elements. Then the total number of resource blocks in frequency is obtained by dividing the total bandwidth by the subcarrier spacing times the number of subcarriers per resource block. Following the described rules, the resource allocation grid can be built. All the resource elements within the grid are assigned arbitrarily to different UEs. However, some rules must be followed. First, the allocation is done per resource block, not for each individual resource element. The time allocation is normally done every subframe. The resource allocation is done according to the selected allocation metric. In practice, we can assume that two separated resource allocation grids are used, one for downlink and another one for uplink. Multi-input, multi-output or MIMO is a method used for increasing the capacity of a radio link using multiple transmission and reception antennas to exploit multipath propagation. Theoretically, MIMO adds an extra dimension to the resource allocation step, adding an extra resource grid per transmission direction, uplink and downlink. In practice, it just increases the allocated throughput capacity per resource block as many times as MIMO la layers available. A very important step, 
within the resource allocation procedure is the adaptive modulation encoding, which dynamically, dynamically adjusts the OFTM modulation order, coding method, and coding rate to maximize the throughput according to the measured channel quality. This channel quality is continuously reported by the best station and US using the channel quality indicators or CQIs. These CQIs are estimated from the SINR estimation and are reported to the other end and used to select the most appropriate modulation encoding scheme. The estimation of the CQIs can be done in two different modes, wideband or subband. In the wideband mode, the SNR and consequently the CQI is estimated for the entire path width and one single CQI value is estimated for each UE. It is less precise allowing less flexible scheduling but considerably reduces the scheduling and signaling overhead. On the other hand, in the subband mode, the bandwidth is divided in subbands in which individual CQI values are reported by each subband for each UE. Having a higher scheduling and signaling overhead, the resource allocation step is more precise and flexible. But how these CQIs are used by the scheduler? The CQI is used for two main steps. First, it's used to estimate the optimal modulation scheme for each resource block and each UE. Later, this modulation scheme is used to estimate the theoretical throughput for each resource block and each UE, which is used to calculate the scheduling metrics. Each resource block is assigned a different modulation scheme according to the allocated UE in the scheduling step. Consequently, we have resource blocks with different modulation and coding schemes. Each modulation scheme provides a different modulation order, which can be understood as the capacity in bits of each OFDM symbol. With this information, the theoretical throughput per resource elements can be calculated. In this estimation, the number of MIMO layers is used. With estimated throughput, the transport block size, or TBS, is estimated. This TBS is the actual bits of information that are transmitted to or from the allocated UE and resource block. The modulation encoding scheme is directly linked to the CQI values using the following tables including the 3GPP specification. As we have already mentioned, the resource allocation step aims to assign the different resource blocks to the most suitable user equipment for transmission. This suitability is indicated by an arbitrary metric which is estimated for each resource block and each UE. Using the arbitrary metrics, both the uplink and downlink resource grids are allocated. Different metrics types can be used, and these metrics are not defined in the standards and it's up to the operator to design or choose them. There are two main groups of metrics. First, we have the channel and aware strategies in which the channel state is not taken into consideration. The goal is to ensure resource fairness without considering the overall performance of the network. For the channel aware strategies, the channel state is used. In this type of metrics, the goal is to improve the overall performance of the network and maximize the resource utilization. In most of these metrics, the estimated and past average throughput for each resource block and each UE are used. One special characteristic of the resource allocation step is that it is not explicitly defined on the standards and is up to all the operators to define the implementation details. On the time axis, the resource allocation can be distributed in two manners. The localized modality allocates all the contiguous slots along the time axis within a subframe of one millisecond to the same UEs. On the distributed mode, the allocation is free along the time axis, providing a more flexible scheduling with, with much higher overhead. On the frequency side, there are also several ways of organizing the resources. If, if type 0 is selected, multiple consecutive resource blocks are bundled into the so-called resource block group. In this case, all the resource blocks within each resource block group are assigned to the same UE. The number of resource blocks which within each group is defined in the standards as in the following table, depending on the, normal, on the total number of resource blocks within the entire bandwidth. On the other hand, Type 1 configuration allows a much more flexible approach in which the UE resource can be allocated to one or more consecutive resource blocks. However, it requires much more signaling overhead. 
After going over the basics of Mac layer and resource allocation steps, we can conclude that these steps drastically affect the overall performance of the network. Besides, the specifications only define the overall procedure, being most of the critical steps vendor operator dependent. We also pinpointed how the scheduling flexibility, precision, and optimization increases the overall signaling overhead. And finally, we highlighted the importance of an adequate metric selection. It's important to notice that novel use cases require to design novel and specific allocation schemes to fulfill the tight requirement, such as new metrics or even more complex schemes such as network slicing. Thank you for watching.